Hello everybody, this is James Diamond with GlockCNC.com and we have a new headstock that is coming out. It is an ISO 20 headstock. It takes this super precision tooling, which compared to its level of precision, you can buy them very inexpensively. And this headstock is capable of doing really fast tool changes just using a cordless impact. So let's talk about some of the features of the new headstock that we have coming out. The first thing I want to point out to you that's really unique about this is this is what's called a snub nose, or what we call a snub nose spindle arbor. In other words, I'm going to focus right in here. You can see that? That's where the spindle ends. So that means that this tooling taper fits up into the bearing. And that's really where you want your tooling to be, is in the inside race of the bearing. That's where you want the pressure and that's where you want the load to be. We designed it specifically for that. And this is a much heavier duty body than you're going to get on, let's say, a TAG or a Sureline or your typical router, which is just going to be a router body. This is a beautiful piece, by the way, for your TAG, your Sureline, or your router. So just imagine having a nice robust headstock like this so you can cut whatever you want from woods to metals and anything you want. And these are also great for high speed. Reason being is the bearings that we use in there, we have the choice of using deep groove bearings or you can choose angular contact bearings. The range of speed in there, if you choose the deep groove bearings, you're about 8,000 RPMs where you topped out at. If you use all the way up to hybrid angular contact bearings, you can go to 25,000 RPM. And oftentimes, this tooling is already balanced to 20 or 30,000 RPM. But let's also talk about the level of precision that you can get out of these relatively inexpensive pieces of tooling. The ISO 20 tooling is oftentimes found with just one or two ten thousandths runout, which is really, really good. Especially when you consider an R8, maybe has a good R8 is around six ten thousandths. And you might not think, well, that's not that much. You might think that, but really, when you compare one ten thousandths to six ten thousandths, that is a six-fold difference in accuracy. Plus, these really aren't that expensive. I've seen these as little as 25 bucks. And of course, you can, in tooling, you can spend as much as you want, but these are commonly around $35 shipped to you, whether you're looking on Amazon or you're looking on eBay. And the Asian ones, I've actually had some pretty good luck out of getting Asian ones that are very accurate. Now, if you don't want to go with some of the cheaper Asian ones, of course, you can buy some of the European manufactured, US manufactured ones. And sometimes you can even find them on eBay, very inexpensive used. So the availability of tooling and the accuracy given the price of this is actually amazing. So imagine getting a much more robust headstock for your mill or your router, very big bearings in there comparatively, so more robust bearings, and you get that level of accuracy. Everybody knows that if you can handle the dampening better through vibration into your headstock and bearings, and you can get really good run out, you're going to get a much better product. Your finished products are going to be better. You're going to have a better finish on them, right? Does it all make sense? So here are some of the uh, other sweet features about this. One of the things that I think everybody finds to be a pain, if you have a headstock that, you know, typically in a mill or a router, it's going to be mounted like this, right? Well, if you've got a fixed ER headstock, you've got to use two hands for the wrench and all that to be able to loosen that up. Sometimes the cutter falls out, falls on your workpiece, falls on the floor, or chips or whatever. It's a pain, right? Well, one of the nice things is when you have tooling like this, you can just plop this right in and out of there and you're done. And it's very fast because the only thing that you really need to do that is you want to grab for yourself a quarter inch impact, cordless impact, and then a socket adapter. And you can just on this side, just zip this thing right in and out. These are already threaded on the inside. So tool changes happen, in, I don't know, five seconds. It's very, very quick. 
and it's so much easier than using just a fixed collet system, whether it's an R8 or an ER. And now some of you might be wondering though, well, okay, what about if I use the Tormox tooling system, the TTS? Well, I am a fan of the Tormox tooling system and we are a dealer for the Tormox tooling system. The disadvantage of that is that it adds an extra piece. Now, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If you're looking at, and maybe some of you have heard me talk about this, this is the collet that goes in the spindle arbor, and this is some Tormach tooling right here. And, well, and actually, if you look at this one, it's actually chipped. So that's what happens when stuff drops out of a collet by accident. At any rate, anything that you introduce in between the bearing and this cutter is going to introduce some runout or error. So now what you have is you have the spindle arbor, which is going to have a certain amount of runout, might not be much, but now you're adding a collet to it, which is going to add some error. And then you're going to add the Tormach tooling, which is going to add more error. So what happens is you stack error on top of error on top of error. So by the time this cutter actually is cutting, you've got air stacked on top of air and you're not going to get the super good high end finish that you would if you're just using simply tooling that goes right into that spindle arbor. And in this case, this tooling is typically anywhere, like I mentioned, from two ten thousandths and oftentimes one ten thousandths of an inch run out and you will just never ever get that on this system. So. You might also be wondering, well, okay, you guys just came out with a BT30 spindle, and that's true, we did. So why did we also do the ISO 20? Well, there's a couple different reasons. Number one is it's much less expensive for individuals to buy. The BT30 is my favorite, and it does have a wide variety of uses in tooling, but for guys who can't afford the BT30, this is the perfect fit for that. And it's also a perfect fit for those guys who want to use this as a router because there's lots of ISO 20 tooling out there for routing and all that good stuff, right? 